right. How are you doing? Here's hoping that all is well with you. Thank you so much for making time and for always being a part of the program. It is particularly that time of the week where we get to meet right here in the studios just to get to have a chat on a specific topical issue just to make sense out of it. And tonight on the program, our focus is on the performance contracts, otherwise known as Imihigo. And of course, it is an interactive show which we would like you to start joining the conversation. The hashtag, as always, is in focus RW. My name, as always, is Eugene. And Nangwe. let's take a look at what already we are having going on on our social media sphere. Definitely all you need to do, as we said earlier on, is add the hashtag in focus RW and we'll be able to track your tweets in the course of the program. We have Minega who says, good show indeed. Imihigo 2018 evaluation tools seem to be more stringent compared to previous years. Just looking at the score, would you please ask your panelists to shed some light on this? I'm curious, so am I. We'll definitely be able to have that answered here because we have the right panel right here. Also, uh, Nsanga Sylvia, good friend of the show, says this process should be citizen-driven, not district leaders meeting to decide what to do for the Baturaje. Our Baturaje know best their problems. They can propose also solutions and themselves can monitor progress powerful comment right there we'll get to hear from our power panel on what they think about that also we have uh fata jose at fata jose who says that i think there is uh like a chair or invisible hands that mayors and their deputies if they are not spare parts of this chair have to sit in some districts have burning chairs such that mayors are always like firefighters instead of striving for imhigo performance this is what he feels right there the second part of that comment is district advisory councils district executive secretaries and all sometimes are not converging for the sake of district performance contracts and of course in that puzzle only three persons are easily fired that is the mayor and his or her deputies. These are the tweets that are coming in already thick and fast. And let's take a look at how the district did perform. This is the overall performance of the district in the 2017-2018 uh, performance contracts. I'm sure this is already on your screens right there. Of course, uh, this is actually showing some surprises over there. Uh, for example, we have uh, an improvement that was realized by the Kichuchiro district in the fourth place from the 25th position in the 2016-2017 results. I want Alice and the team at the control room to leave that on the screen as I go to bring our panelists so that we can be able to make sense out of this particular uh, issue. Alice, just have this one on the screen. Ishire Hariya, I go and introduce our panelists and so that we can make sense out of it. I want you as our viewers also to look at it keenly and just digest what you see over there so that you can also start throwing in your questions. The hashtag as always is in focus RW. Let me bring on board our panelists right here. We have Ivan Morenzi who's the Deputy Director General of the National Institute of Statistics. Thank you for joining us on the program. Also with us is none other than Colette Ndabarushimana, who's actually from Transparency International. Your role is a senior project coordinator at TI Rwanda. Thank you for joining us on the program. Also with us is Anthony Ruburika, who's the, uh, from the Rwanda Governance Board. Thank you for joining us on the program. You are in charge of citizen participation and advocacy. You're actually an, an advocacy specialist. Thank you for joining us. Yes. And uh, Nelson Gashagaza, who made it to the program. Thank you so much for joining us. You are a political analyst on this program tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hosting us. Perfect. Um, I want to start with Ivan Morenzi from the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda. Definitely, we've seen the numbers over there. There's a question that has been shot concerning uh, the methodology and, of course, the, uh, you know, the, the things that were being looked into. And this is the first time yes. that the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda is actually being involved as part of those who are evaluating these uh, results of the performance contracts. What exactly did you bring new on board that was never there in the previous Imihigo? Um, when we came on board, it was at the request of the leadership of the country, the, His Excellency the President of the country. And I think the idea of us coming on board was to reevaluate the whole ev um, system of Imihigo, right from the planning and uh, ensure that the planning is aligned to the new um, medium-term strategy for the country, the NST1, mm -hmm. and, and then also ensure that the indicators that are, are being captured as targets mm -hmm. are also aligned to evidence. So as you know, the National Institute of Statistics, Rwanda, uh, we do various surveys in the country, and the idea was that 
we should be able to use more of our evidence mm -hmm. of, of our research. Mm -hmm. And then the other things that we looked at was to, to look at the whole um, uh, Imihigo and say what other things can we change. And through a consultative process led by the right Honorable Prime Minister, we identified about three things, what which, are those which, three things? Which, which had to change. Mm -hmm. One was that uh, everything doesn't have to be in Imihigo. Mm -hmm. There are things which are usual day-to-day -day activities, mm -hmm. which can always be in an action plan. Yes. So we brought in the idea of the annual action plan also having a weight mm -hmm. and several weighted. Mm -hmm. And therefore, leave only key things into the Imihigo mm -hmm. so that people can focus and prioritize in terms of focusing on key transformative things. Mm -hmm. The second thing was also to say, um, when we do things, when people do projects and activities, is the quality good? And it had been seen in the previous years that there were questions about quality. And so what we did was to engage experts, engineers, uh, to be able to evaluate quality of projects. So mm -hmm. it's not about just completion of things, it's also the quality. So that's the second thing we brought Quality in. is comparative sometimes. So what were you basing on to actually decide and say, this is quality and this is substandard? Yeah, um, as I said, engaging engineers, including architects, uh, these are qualified professionals, especially when it comes to construction projects, roads, uh, schools, etc. And they were able to look at the plans that were being designed for those projects and also go to the field and evaluate and say, uh, is the road having a drainage? Is the quality of the materials which were used in the construction materials well? Is it sustainable after mm -hmm. the period that mm -hmm. it was designed? Those are all the details that they were looking at. Right. The third thing that we brought in, which has caused a lot of discussion, is uh, what we're saying that if something is not complete, then it will not be useful. And therefore, if you had planned that this would be complete, for example, you had planned that uh, a school should be complete, the classroom should be complete, so that students can use it, right. and it wasn't complete, then that is quite as zero. It's either complete or it wasn't complete. Because this and so this- if it was halfway, and it was going on well as far as the progress, the quality and everything, sure. but it was not complete, it's zero. Yes, and again, these were specific activities, projects, which, if not complete, they can't be put to use. So that's the idea of delaying development. Right. If things are just completed 50%, mm -hmm. people should not just be comfortable about that completion. The idea should be that uh, we should aim for completion of something in the time it was designed for, so that gets used. But I also, um, let me clarify there that uh, of the whole Imigos, that are actually accounted to just 17%. So 17%. the other things are things which if, even if they are complete 50% or 60%, they can be used. For example, Mutual de Sante. Right. You might have targeted to reach 1,000 people and you reach 500 or 700. That's still fine, and that should be evaluated as that. Right. Let me bring in uh, a colleague from Transparency International Rwanda. I remember uh, President Kagame being a bit, uh, you know, furious concerning the issue of local leaders reaching out to the citizens. Citizen outreach was one of the things that President Kagame personally pointed out as, a, as an issue, even saying that development partners seem to know more about our local issues than our own leaders. As Transparency International Rwanda, what stood out for you that you feel the local leaders fail to do and you, you, you simply wish would be done even better as far as the issue of citizen outreach is concerned, the place of the citizens in all this? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, what we feel is that uh, the citizens are not involved as it should be for, from the beginning, from the planning stage. They are not involved. Uh, and this, we say it from the baseline survey we carried in Transparency International Rwanda, mm -hmm. where we, in two districts, where we are, there is a project we are implementing on how, the performance of Imihigo. And uh, what we have realized is that in the planning phase, it's at 15%. So the local leaders seem to be so deciding the local, these things yes, on their own. Yes, that is the problem. Uh -huh. That's the problem. Okay, during the implementation, citizens are involved. So from those two districts where we carry the, 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 the baseline, the implementation is at 68%, while the planning is at 15% and the evaluation at 15%. As well. Yet planning is very, very key. Planning is very key. And if uh, in Mihigo are not being really, the, the, the performance is not really very high, it's due to the lack of being engaged, that ownership. 
So if uh, local leaders are not really involving citizens from phase one, mm -hmm. So that is the problem. It's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. Uh, let's hear from Anthony. Anthony, from the Rwanda Governance Board's, Board's perspective and your position as uh, someone who's in charge of citizen participation, uh, why is that a big issue that, uh, you know, Colette is raising? Why are leaders at local level deciding to only bring in the citizens, so to speak, at the implementation level when they were supposed to even have been involved at the planning part? Or yeah. do you even agree or, or about this uh, statement? Well, thank you. Uh, I think um, there is a, a problem. There's Where's a problem the problem? Uh -huh. Of citizen participation. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like um, local leaders do not involve the Maikonka with credit. Mm -hmm. They don't involve the citizens right from the planning uh, stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they don't involve the citizens, then a lot of uh, activities done by technicians, it's uh, under the pretext that uh, technicians know better planning things. But uh, I think if citizens were given chance to air out their concerns, to give them their priorities, mm -hmm. to, to suggest what they should uh, uh, be doing or what should be done uh, in, uh, in, in, in their own localities, mm -hmm. I, I think it would improve. It would improve. Yeah. But so as you speak and as you say this loud and clear, then what is your mandate as a person in charge of citizen participation at Rwanda Governance Board when you openly say that you concur, that indeed local leaders are not involving citizens at these key stages of the projects that affect them on a day-to-day -day basis. So who's sleeping on the job? Is it you? Are you one of those people <laughs> sleeping on the job? Uh, I think, uh, let's see the way how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, local leaders have their mandate. They're supposed to do the outreach. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to engage the citizens. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to actually seek uh, ideas from them. Mm -hmm. RGB mm -hmm. is an institution that is supposed to uh, promote good governance practices. And citizen good participation governance. is one of them. Sure. Mm -hmm. And now, what we do, we follow up and see whether this one is being done. Uh -huh. And we do the follow up every year. Mm -hmm. We have what we call Governance Month. Mm -hmm. It's a period that we engage the, the local government mm -hmm. and we actually check out. Uh, how uh, citizens are being engaged, mm -hmm. how local leaders are, are following up, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, uh, when we say they are not fully involving citizens, it's because we have gone down, we have talked to them. Uh, actually, when you look at our publications, the citizen report card, citizens are not satisfied with the way they are being engaged. They think that they are actually brought in at the last minute in the implementation. Right. So we are trying to bring this out so that even leaders should actually uh, work on it, should change their way of they doing things. They change the way of leadership. Uh, uh, before I, I let you go, because uh, allow me to push you on this, because it's a very important issue. Um, so beyond just assessing and releasing the reports on how leaders are involving citizens, what more do you do then? We do a lot. Uh -huh. We actually, as far as that specific yeah, issue yeah, is concerned, sure. we go down and uh, give feedback uh -huh. to local leaders. Uh -huh. We call them. We show them what citizens think. Actually, we look at uh, citizen uh, satisfaction. We look at uh, the perception, what they think, what they, uh, they suggest should be done, how they should be involved, the ideas that they give we share with local leaders. Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot is being changed mm -hmm. because leaders are now becoming aware mm -hmm. that they need to involve these people. The citizens. Uh, Nelson, I see you nodding your head. I'm, and, and from the start of the conversation, you've been keenly listening to this. Uh, let me bring you in. I mean, uh, what, what do you hear from what the panelists have said, the, the previous speakers have said? I think we can pick two or three things. Mm -hmm. I think Kodet, she, she's very right. We even have a good example uh, recently during this Ambigo uh, where you have people from Yamagabe who are a little bit tired and, and then feel like revolting because they have been asking their leadership to take into account what their 
giving them as feedback, mm. but they, at the end of the day, what they say as Mihigo is not theirs, even if they were actually involved in designing it. So that they were involved, but what they saw mm -hmm. is totally different. Mm. So there's also another case where actually leaders don't involve citizen, and then probably actually they perform. Mm -hmm. Now, the question becomes, who is to blame? Is it RGB or is it the the, 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 the local stuff? Mm. But I think I think also it's about how we have designed the institution of of, of district and mayors itself, mm -hmm. because you have, we don't see the mayor institution as a political office, mm -hmm. but, but we see it as a technical one. Mm -hmm. And then the problem with the people who think they are technical people, they always think that they have to deposit knowledge into people. Mm -hmm. They know better mm -hmm. than citizen. But what they don't understand when you remove the political space is the ability to have a feedback group that actually makes them better. So if you really look at everyone who have performed very, uh, like, uh, at the end of the day, even the, the lowest person did not perform mm. that, mm. you know, bad compared to, no one is under 50 at least. But if you really look, there's an issue of participation. But now, the issue, even where there's a participation, there's an issue of quality of participating. And then when you look in the city of Kigali, for example, now it's going to be a little bit tricky, for example. The idea is, in, like in, in urban cities, there's low participation right. compared to rural cities. But the only problem is, these are the elite people who are supposed to be driving the, you know, the, the, the vision of the country you know, a, bit, a, a bit further. Two, if you really look at a citizen of Rwanda, you have almost, or almost like uh, 40, 50 percent of them being young people. Now, the platform the government has put in place on how people participate in planning doesn't account to the actual the differences of how young people really want, want to be to be involved. To be involved. To be involved. involve them. In, to involve them. So now, young people don't attend in, 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 uh, Muganda. They don't attend, uh, you know, uh, 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 this uh, evening events. Uh, the up there, so at the end of the day, if you're having the largest part of your of of, of your citizen yes. who are highly connected, educated, and then you are not putting you know infrastructure they need to participate into the stuff, then probably even the planning is going to go wrong in right. the first place because you never put that in perspective. Right, Ivan. I mean, listening to that as well, yeah. also, and, and also adding to this question that Minega did ask, uh, uh, it seems that uh, the tools for evaluation uh, were more stringent compared to previous years. Uh, and, and then topping up with what Nelson says as far as the, the, the youth as well, the tools that are being used for them to be able to participate do not sort of match uh, what they fancy, for instance. I mean, what, what, what can be done for the next Imihigos going forward? Maybe it's just starting with a question on the, the, the methodology being tough or stringent. That, that has indeed come out. I think what we should realize is that uh, we are at a critical stage as a country. Uh, we are looking at the ambitions of the country in terms of in the next, uh, I think, Vision 2050 being a high-income country. Things have to be done different. I think that's what the tone that the leadership has set in the sense that we have to be more conscious about time. We have to do things well, implement a number of things quickly. And if you, if you lax in that sense, in terms of how you evaluate that, mm -hmm. then those ambitions won't be achieved. I right. think that's, that's the tone behind this evaluation. Right. But also, it's also realistic in terms of the criteria that it looks at. And from our assessment so far, the, the evaluation has evolved over time. It, they may go started way back in 2006. Six, yes. So over the years, you keep looking at the context into which you are in and the, uh, the ambition of the country, and you adjust according, and I think that's where we are. But I wanted to just uh, touch on what has been shared so far on citizen participation. I think, again, for me, the performance of a district is not only about citizen participation. Mm. There's so many other things. Mm. But just on the issue of young people being involved and, and citizens in general, I think probably we should define very well what we mean by engagement mm -hmm. or involvement. Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely a trust in people doing the work, meaning the leadership of the district and the other technician. I think probably what misses is just engagement with the people in terms of this is what we think is good for you, or these are the plans we have for you. Maybe the engagement is not about what ideas do you have, because you've got to realize that 
everyone may not be in, in connection with, with, the, with the development of the country or with the plans of the country. And I think what we're talking about here is probably them touching base with them and showing them what the plans are mm -hmm. and, and having their awareness and probably also their input mm -hmm. into some of those ideas. Mm -hmm. And once that's clarified, then maybe it becomes clear what you expect from the citizens, the citizens or the young people. And uh, I think most of the people, even in the districts or even in government, are young people as well. And I think, in my view, there's not so much a miss in terms of young people being involved in, in, in what the country is. I totally achieve. disagree because <laughs> being young people doesn't mean actually knowing young people. We have even seen, even the President Kagame actually asking the young people he puts in government, not necessarily the one who are performing, they don't perform. So now there's no correlation of being young as an opposition, in position and being some. And then having said that, what, what, what's actually also connected to that, like being young, does it really mean being based? It's the same thing as telling women, you know what, you are women, so when you're participating in, in Mihigo, the design of Mihigo, do you come as a citizen or do you come as a woman who needs a special case than the man. So what do you what, what do you want to see happening as far so, as involvement of young people? I totally agree in, we, in this uh, execution, even from planning. For example, there's there's a research that was done, uh, because people were saying in Africa, young people don't participate in you know in political decision or even you know making policies. But a research has shown that actually the most political connected in terms of internet happens to be Africa. Mm -hmm. Expectation being Rwanda only, mm -hmm. where young people are not into politics, only politicians are driving conversation on Twitter. Mm -hmm. This was a research. Mm -hmm. Now, these young people happen to be there on social media. Now, the quality of engagement doesn't attract them into the conversation. That's something I agree up with Ivan. Mm -hmm. We they need to tune the quality of engagement and feedback groups because they are already on the internet. Why are Rwandans not interacting politically when the rest of the continent is doing that? Right. I think it's a question to ask. I think that's a question for another day which we'll definitely be able to develop uh, properly. I, I want us to move the conversation a bit and, and, and talk a bit about the statements that were made during this session where the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Prime Minister himself said that those who didn't succeed lacked preparation. Uh, were not well versed with enough information about their roles and what is expected of them regarding particular targets and their level and stages of involvement. This is so calling, especially when someone is a leader who, you know, lacks some of these things to a point where he underperforms. And the president himself said that the underperformance reflects on the citizens of those particular districts. I, I want to bring in Colette on this and probably ask you, do you think, because uh, Murenzi here mentioned the issue of we are moving fast as a country, and so things are changing. We need to implement things in a, in, in a faster way or in a way that is not sluggish. Do you think that leaders are under pressure to a point whereby they give unrealistic targets that they are not even aware of how they will even implement? Is this what you think? Uh, okay, I wouldn't say that they are really under pressure, but I think uh, they, they, their goals are not smart. Mm -hmm. They set goals which are not measurable, which are not specific, which are not achievable. So that's how they get squeezed, and at the end of the day, they, cannot, they, are, they are not able to perform, mm -hmm. to deliver. What do you think pushes them to set these goals that are not smart? Uh, I think it's like uh, they want to show that they are able to do it, mm -hmm. and yet they are not, because, I mean... Also, there is a, you can't set as a goal to, to, to do something when you feel like you don't have means to do it or you are, you know, at this particular time, mm -hmm. because there is also an issue of time. When are you able to do it? So if you set uh, goals which are not achievable, you are going to fail. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better to set, you know, goals in their imihigo, which are really achievable that is the problem yeah. and they should be encouraged to do that although there is of course uh, they have to rush they have mm -hmm. to perform they have but still this is something they can present and mm. I don't think uh, 
the government will be, you know, mm. it's because they, they are evaluated according to what they... They, they promised and delivered. Exactly. But, but the, the, the issue is not, is not necessarily how, like, things I'm saying I'm going to deliver. No, the quality, like she's, she's saying, actually is, is the, the biggest problem maybe happens to be that this person did not say things they cannot deliver. But this person cannot deliver in one year. So when you look at Mihigo, they are those, the shortest of the short term, medium term mm. of government. So mm. now you can imagine, if you have to empower citizens to do something, this is something that is not going to happen in one year. Mm. There's no way that's ever happened. So now, the other trick will be to go for the simple ways, planting flowers. But if you are really looking at radical solutions, they cannot happen in one year. Anthony, do you agree? I mean, do you I mean, think uh, that they are unrealistic? I have, uh, because we have districts that have performed well. Uh, they've delivered. Okay. Yeah. Do you think what Nelson says makes I sense? I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, look at uh, citizen participation this way. There are certain things that when you engage them, citizens will easily come and, and do them. If you talk about the greening, about the making, planting trees, and these simple things. These ones can be done. If you engage them, if you yeah. give them the right uh, things, the tools and other things to use, it's going to be done. But you, you talked about the youth. You forget that we have a problem with the youth who are not willing to participate, mm -hmm. who are not willing to, to perform. Uh, you, you may have the tools in place, but the youth are not ready. No, I'm, not I'm ready, refusing with that point. Wait, wait, wait. If they're not ready to come and participate in the community work, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. community work is the simplest thing they can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many do you find them? I, I, I totally agree. So if they can't come uh, during Umuganda mm -hmm. and participate in, in the community work... They should not complain that they're not involved. Sure, yeah, this is it. Uh, this, is it. Uh, th this is where I disagree with him, because uh, there are two levels of, 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 of this argument. One, it's assuming that actually young people are the problem that needs to be fixed, rather than being the partners in the development. One, I'm going to give you a simple example. We have p young people at, at a place like... Uh, like, 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 like uh, young people at a place like in, in Kyovo, right, um, who they, they have, who are doing e-umuganda. Mm. It means they bring their, 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 their software, engineering skills to, to make things that might solve the community. They might not go into cleaning. They might use e-umuganda. No, wait, 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 wait. See, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying they, 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 the definition of Muganda itself should be evolving beyond cleaning. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Two, the other level is in there because it assumes that young people have tools and power right. to, to participate in it. But again, you have to understand how does our educational system that doesn't have a civic education into it. Right. Uh, like, are we really empowered enough educational-wise, quality-wise, <laughs> to create active citizen. Mm -hmm. So now, this is, this is a level of actually blaming young people no. when you're not giving power and tools they need. You mm -hmm. need to Let, let me bring Ivan uh, yeah, uh, in, uh, on just, that, and then we move. To come in and uh, not miss the key question you brought on table, yes. which is what's behind the performance of districts, mm -hmm. especially those not performing well. Right. Again, here I speak from the evidence. For example, as, uh, as you go, Nyarugenge district dropped significantly from the fifth position to the 20th. That's number one. Uh, there is Nyanza district, which dropped from 21st position to number 30. Uh, some people don't get it, especially for Nyarugenge. How? Well, I, I may not just single out one district, but I would just say those in general not performing well. Mm -hmm. um, I think performance of districts highly depends on the leadership having the ownership of what has to be achieved. The Imihigo, as the president pointed out, are very realistic, actually. From the planning, there's consultations at the highest levels. And that's why you see some districts doing well. Mm -hmm. So most of the Mihigos are almost uniform mm -hmm. across districts. Mm -hmm. So from what we see from evidence is that those performing well are districts where you have leadership engaging all stakeholders, not only their management, their staff, even other external stakeholders, mm -hmm. into saying, this is what we aim to achieve this year. Mm -hmm. How can you partner with us? And that's drawn down to other levels of sectors of a cell. That's the level of engagement that happens right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then usual follow-up of the activities or the projects they have planned to do. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there might be some cases where, obviously, even with that follow-up, some things don't get done. Yes. Maybe because you overthought, maybe you would do it. But I would say that's really on a minimal scale because from experience, they know that, you know, a road, maybe can, you can only commit this much this year. You don't have to commit everything this year. Mm -hmm. So that's what they do. But, but and, when they know that if they don't commit everything this year, as you said, that, uh, you know, uh, measurement that if you have started and not completed, you get zero. Ah, okay. On that, it's zero on what you committed. Mm -hmm. yes. If the road was 100 kilometers, mm -hmm. and this year you committed 20 kilometers, mm -hmm. what is evaluated is those 20. Did mm -hmm. you achieve the 20, mm -hmm. which you committed? Mm -hmm. It's not the 100. Okay. So in that sense, if you committed 20 this year and you do it, mm -hmm. then you get 100% on that. Okay. But if you committed 20 and you don't achieve it, that's a different case. So it's about what you committed. Okay. So I think on cases of, like you've pointed out, you know, districts performing well, I mean badly, mm -hmm. it's the opposite. It's the opposite of what we've said. Mm -hmm. It's cases where you find that leadership of throughout the year probably has not been very uh, careful to follow up those things. And then they come maybe towards the end and begin to check around, uh, did this happen, did this happen? And that's too late mm. to ensure that what you had planned had, had uh, gotten executed. Mm. So I think to me, that's really the key issues around uh, this yeah, performance, performance that we are seeing. Right. It all mainly falls on how leadership is able to plan, engage uh, all stakeholders and follow through right from the beginning. And where they need support, because there are other joint Mihigos, engage the other stakeholders across central government to be able to participate and help you also achieve those targets. Right. Perfect. Uh, Anthony, yeah, so you uh, want to come in? I wanted to say something. Uh, I think James is right. Uh, when the leadership engages all the stakeholders, it's very important. Uh, sometimes you'll find that uh, different uh, ministries have what they call joint Mihigo where they have some uh, stake to, to, to play to, together with the districts. If the districts do not follow very closely and very swiftly, there would be some delays from these uh, other ministries. In that case, even if the part of the district was done, and the other one from the ministry is not done because it was not well followed up, or, or the money was not set in time, then that becomes a problem. What if it was the problem of the partner ministries? Yeah, yeah this is it. Uh, who, who, who bears the blame? Because at the end of the day, it is the district that is being evaluated. Well, it's the district. But as, as Len says, if you follow the up from the beginning, mm -hmm. you can even make a case and put it across and say, look, my part is that. The rest is from such and such a ministry. Right. But also to support Ivan, I think there's another case where actually, since this, this may go the way they have evaluated, it's also, I guess, how... Uh, what you have promised to do, how actually it contributes to the development of a country. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have planted flowers, probably you are going to get mar less marked than someone who have built 20 kilometers of, of, of a street or a certain uh, amount of, you know, um, productivity in, in stuff. So there's also that level. Probably if you look like someone like Nyaru Jenge dropping, mm -hmm. probably you will, you will notice that maybe it wasn't about feedback and planning, maybe it was about their level of, of, of you know, the things they had promised to, to deliver on. Right. I see our technicians want to come and fix Anthony's microphone, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not so sure if it is, it, is, it is audible enough. And as they come, uh, allow me to ask you, Colette, uh, as I go to the screen, just to read some of the thoughts that we are seeing right there, the issue of corruption and, and, and cheating. You know, uh, so that you get marks. Was this an, an, an issue this year from Transparency International? Did you notice any of this? Because in the past, there have been those allegations that some leaders, you know, went through cooked ways and corrupt ways to be able to get some marks, to be able to hit the targets that they have. Was this, was this an issue this year? Mm -hmm. And it was actually an issue at the national level. Right. So uh, this was due to what we were saying uh, for some leaders being too ambitious right. compared to what they can achieve. Uh -huh. But uh, for this year, we haven't gotten any complaints related to this. Due to the corruption yeah. levels. But, okay. In our evaluation, there are cases where we, and we highlighted this in the report, where you find that leadership is trying to 
make up things or inflate re achievement. This happened? Yeah, and, 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 and those are cases we, we brought out also in the report. And I think the, the message here is that it's, it's not worth it because the, the evaluation is so rigorous mm -hmm. that we can be able to detect those cases. Mm -hmm. But also the unfortunate thing is that you are lying to yourself. In, in, when you try to say, well, I achieved 90%, yet you know it was 30 you are lying to yourself and you are lying to the community. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it, it just affects what's, what's the truth and how you could have been supported. Mm -hmm. I think the recommendation we are making is that um, people should, should just be clear in terms of what's really achieved and maybe give the good reasons as to why it wasn't so that they can be supported and helped. And, and I think that's really an issue that uh, we, we trust leadership is going to deal with, especially the Minister of Local Government. Um, in trying to address those cases. Right. President Kagame always says that, you know, he doesn't, especially when he meets with the leaders at the National Re uh, Leadership Retreat and other major functions, and, and then someone starts talking about, you know, throwing flowers at how good they have done well and, 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 and all that, the positive things. It, it, most of the time he's like, I want to hear where the challenges are, where the issues are. And this is always in aim of trying to improve the, 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 the situation. Uh, let me throw this to Anthony. Where do you see the gaps in the whole Imihigo concept as far as delivering good governance is concerned? Where do you see the gaps? Well, um, the gaps, are, first of all, we said in the planning. Mm -hmm. If the planning is done by a small group of people mm -hmm. and it's not involving, it's not engaging all the stakeholders. So what have we done about that for the next uh, Imihigo process? Has something been done already? Because there were signs yes. that happened. Yes, sure. Now, when this Imihigo is being signed, the leaders are reminded that they should immediately share with the stakeholders, be it civil society, be it uh, other government institutions, be it uh, uh, the people, especially the citizens mm. who are going to take part, to, 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 to pay part. Mm. So if they do that, I think the problem, the first problem will be solved. Mm -hmm. Second, the issue of following up. Mm -hmm. Following up during the Hugo implementation, this involves, again, the leadership. They have to make sure that they give feedback. They say, here things are not going well. Mm -hmm. There things are going well, but they can improve. So this follow up, constant follow up mm -hmm. by leadership, and then engaging, the, the, by the way, if citizens are well informed and they're engaged from the beginning... They will demand. They will demand. And they will even tell you, they will monitor, they will say, whoever is doing this work is not doing it the right way. Mm. But we see them demanding, but, 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 but sadly, mostly when President Kagame visits these districts, these villages, this is when we see them pick the microphone and actually point out some of the challenges uh, that they have. Does this go to show that the tools of citizens' complaints and engagement are not that functional, that we have to wait for the president for us to raise our concerns about little issues sure, that, that, the, that the, the leadership should have tackled. That, that's where the gap is. Citizens may raise the, the, their voices, they may shout, but leadership will not pay heed. Mm -hmm. If they don't pay heed, then of course nothing is being done. Mm -hmm. And when nothing is done, then that's when they actually find that they, 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 they are behind. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that Leaders should be active, proactive, actually. Mm -hmm. After doing the planning, let them give the feedback. Look at the case of uh, the uh, councillors, mm -hmm. the district councillors, uh, sector councillors. These are people who are supposed to represent the citizens. Even if they have planned well, they have discussed all these, they have, they have played a part, they don't go back and inform the citizens. Look, we have done this and that. Could you follow up and see if this are being done? It's happening or so not. We are looking at that as a problem. We need everybody to be proactive mm -hmm. so that if you have planned, if you have uh, put uh, uh, technicians in place, but someone must follow them up right. and the citizen must be made aware mm -hmm. so that the ownership of the citizen will actually do the monitoring, the, 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 the follow up uh, and the report. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the report is followed keenly by the, those who in, 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 in positions of responsibility, things are going to change. Things are going yeah, to change. I, I would like to add on something. Yes. 
uh, there is also a key gap, feedback. Uh -huh. Even if uh, citizens uh, do uh, identify their needs, those which are not selected, the leaders should go back and inform the citizens, look, we prioritize 10 issues, but only two or three have been worked on. Worked on. Or picked up, so, yes. Yes, so they will really own the two remaining, and they will be focused, they will focus on them and, you know, follow them up and make sure that they are actively involved in their implementation. Right. I mean, Ivan, how do we bring in all this, uh, you know, feedback that is being said right now? Is it too late as far as the next evaluation is concerned? Is it too late? Can these things be no, no. In, in, in put in there? I, th I think the Imihigo evaluation and, and planning is, I would say, a work in progress. And that's how we should view it. Just this year, there was something special which was done. Um, several ministries, Minalok, uh, Minister of Finance, and others, uh, organized this dialogue between the central uh, government and districts, just in setting the Imhigo. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was found to be very useful, whereby, especially when you talk of joint Imhigo, where expectations are clarified, you as a district, this is what you have to do, the ministry has to, be, to do this, and that helps already in terms of ownership at that level. And I think what we expect is that even the next year, some of these ideas that uh, are being brought out uh, could be other engagements at, and conversations happening. Right now, we're already being informed that the, 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 the local government is planning discussions between us and districts for them to get feedback from ourselves who did evaluation to just understand those underlying issues that cause um, poor performance and how they can improve. So I think this is a work in progress and we can only expect that uh, over the next two, three years, you know, we keep refining and, and as we keep refining, things would, I think, be we'll much better. We'll be better. Nelson, talk to me or, or share with me from your own analysis what you think is going on in the minds of the leaders of Nyanza who got 53.0%, Ruhango got 53.4%. At the way bottom, uh, what, what could be going on in the minds of those leaders as we speak right now? Uh, also, we, we have to clarify too that uh, like the South Province has has eight district, and then five of them had their mayors and almost their you know the whole executive committee you know resigning. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to actually, so you think um, this might this, might have uh, impacted on their performance? Of course, it did. Uh, there's no way of saying that it did not, because at the end of the day, the reason why Ivan did it. Um, well, we 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 can't say exactly because there are some other cases. We try to analyze that. Mm -hmm. There are some other cases, some other cases where we found that there had been change in leadership, but still they performed well. Mm -hmm. But yes, I agree with Nelson that, that there's definitely an effect where especially we found that the new leadership comes on board and maybe has not yet gotten clear in terms of what yeah. was being done and how it was being yeah. followed up. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's some... For example, the should be being an outlier out of this, like right. where you had the mayor resigning, but actually the district stays, you know, still performed better contrary to other ones. So you're asking me, well, what's going there in, in their, their minds? minds? You should have listened to Radio Rwanda after the, 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 the presentation of Mihigo because mm -hmm. now people feel like... You know what? We have been disappointed mm -hmm. by our leaders, yeah. which I think that fire goes into uh, into into the leaders. But also, I, I, I want to add a few things on this. Like we, we are assuming, we are assuming that the, the that citizen of Rwanda knows the tools they have at hand to to keep accountable their, their, their you know their their leaders. It means uh, the feedback and then the institution and the way to do that. No, it's not the case. We remember during during Mushichano where actually Peka, uh, uh, the president actually asked, why am I being asked to create institution that already exists? So which means at one level, people either one, one single voice, they don't, you know, they don't come together and then air their, their, their issues in a certain way that can be measurable or impactful, or two, they don't even know where they can bring their claims. So at the end of the day, when the president visits them, then you will have a Nangwe asking a question and raising that question. And then you will notice that you have actually too many people who are that, but these people never came together or neither even ever used the institution that is there. So now, 
I think one of the way of doing that, you know, beyond the feedback, beyond the engagement and the conversation, it's actually leaders to understand that they, are, they lead and then people are not in competition with them, they are there actually to help them. So to do that, you need to educate individuals of their rights and the ways they can actually always reach up to you mm -hmm. just in case. Right. But you really need to change the behavior of our leaders to understand that they are not in competition with people. They are there to save people and then when they converse and stuff, so that requires. But now, that requires two things, integrity, and then it requires um, the use of proper grammar in the way we communicate things. And three, it requires that actually even that person feels that actually he really needs to be a leader. Mm. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the tweets that are coming in, thick and fast. Hashtag as always is in focus RW. Always add that particular hashtag and it will be able to help me to monitor or track your tweets easily. And they will not takara everywhere. We'll be able to track them and read them here. We have Mutawazi Claude 2. He says that the best way of planning should start in understanding our communities and set customized imihigo. For example, we have some districts that had high prevalence of malaria compared, uh, but pref uh, preference always given to imihigo that would bring scores very bad. I mean, uh, Ivan, what do you think of this? Uh, we have goals that are not tailor-made to the districts or to the issues that concern the district, but to the score that they will get if they implement that. I mean, what, what recommendation have you given in this? I, first of all, it's, it's important that indeed the Imigo are, are relevant to the context of a district. Right. But I think that guidance is there from the national level, means of finance, mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, various districts, given their circumstances, being able at least to have things mm -hmm. which are relevant to that situation. And, um, and I wouldn't say it's, it's totally missed, it's there, but again, it's one of those things which, again, from planning perspective, has to continue to, to, be, to be improved. Right. Uh, I think there's nothing like uh, a district, you know, just we've moved from there. We've moved from a situation where districts just putting in things which they think they can easily achieve. Get marks, yes. No, because the Imihigo right now, the planning uh, guidance is that it's well aligned to the uh, na national strategy for transformation mm -hmm. because each year as you implement that then over time you are you are you are, you are working towards achieving that mm -hmm. so i wouldn't say we are still in those situations uh, of of districts just putting simple things the purposes of and, and now wait, so, uh, be, before you come about, in no, nelson no, i really need to answer that person which one because you know the the the, 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 the thing it's, yes. it's not answering it's mm -hmm. actually adding one thing mm -hmm. i think when i said grammar it works both way now, this is what happens. In most of Mihigo, when they are talking about health, they are talking about Mitoa. How many Mitoa am I going to do? Mm -hmm. But that's under the, you know, the crystal of health. Mm -hmm. But the crystal of health should be, you know, uh, have, uh, you know, a, a, a longer definition. You know, my uh, nutrition, cases of malaria. But as long as I have said that I'm going to have 500 Mitoa. people yeah. Mitoa, then we are willing not to ask the question mm -hmm. of why even these people need that Mitoa. Mm -hmm. So what you mean is that the, the, the targets should be broadened uh, enough so that it's not just about mutual, it, it, it caters yeah. across be, other health Because a person issues. like Ivan, it's really hard for him mm -hmm. to, to statistically, you know, uh, go around and then, because also his job is not actually to suggest he, the, the mayor, mm -hmm. but the mayor should be able to understand that health it's a, has a broader understanding and then it has to look into that. It's not just a, a mutual. The same way that the same mayor tells us, I have created maybe 100 jobs. But when you really look at these jobs, they are the social welfare jobs. Mm. You see? Mm. They are not jobs to create wealth. Right. They are jobs to give you bread on the uh, on stuff, where actually you had day per day, not at least the legal term of what is job. Right. But again, statistics they, has an issue with when it comes to jobs. That's uh, a debate I, I bring Ivan in to, to talk for himself. He's here. He will be able to share whether it is true. They have the uh, power and will to actually go beyond just looking at mutual and looking at other sectors. But Anthony, how then do we ensure that leaders give targets that are actually going to touch the core of the issues that affect their citizens? the quality of the projects that they are actually putting up are actually meeting the real needs of the citizens. How, how do we ensure that they do that? Uh -huh. The districts have broader issues that affect the community. Right. You can't go and look at, looking at small things. 
Uh, what they are doing now is uh, they look at what can bring impact. This you have heard from His Excellency mm -hmm. saying that we need a Mihigo that brings impact mm -hmm. to the community, mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and the districts will have to think very hard what is going to mm. change the lives of the people. Mm. If you talk about uh, um, uh, malnutrition, right. this is something very bad. If you talk about uh, um, job creation, this is something very strong. So these are issues that districts should look at. And when they do, then it impacts the society. We are not looking at a simple case of malaria, a simple case of uh, Hours, if you, no, we are looking at things that are going to bring transformation or change in, mm -hmm. society. Yeah, in the society. And, and by the way, the flowers are no longer in Mihigo. Actually, mm -hmm. the things he has just mentioned are the things which are in Mihigo. Mm. Is there a situation where a leader or district leader puts up a project and it is actually turned down and it, he's told or she's told this one is an, an issue? Uh, we cannot consider it as part of the Mihigo. Is there such a situation? Well, I, I, I wouldn't really speak uh, much about that because I'm not so much involved in the planning. Mm -hmm. But um, at least from this year where we slightly participated, right. uh, what I notice overall is that there's nothing like a district just bringing on table what they think is their mihigo. There's that uh, help from the planning team in the Minister of Finance plus uh, the Minister of Local Government plus the Prime Minister's office all aspects of leadership being involved in ensuring that the, the, the imhigo that is being put are indeed what's aligned to make an impact to, to, to people's lives. Uh, at least that's what I, I took away from just being involved this year right. a little bit right. on the planning. Perfect. We have just slightly about three minutes to go and I want to give us the parting shot and then I'll come and read the tweets. Nelson, the issue of citizen participation and other underlying issues moving forward. Where do we go from here? Some people have tweeted and said there seems to be a top-bottom approach and not a bottom-top approach to the Imihigo uh, conceptual process. How do we deal with this? Very briefly. I, I, I think we are looking at two cases. Well, of course, if you are dealing with, you know, people at lower level with this education, sometimes, you know, the decision has to come to, from the top. But mm -hmm. actually, you have to tell them in a language they understand so that they can own them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you really need to build a culture of feedback loop. That culture takes time. So while you are bringing it down, you should be able also to be investing into the culture that is going to reach a, a certain place mm -hmm. where actually these individuals are going to tell you, you know what? This is what now what we want. Mm. Now we know this is. You see the thing? It's mm. like uh, there's that level that has to go into it. We have done it. Vision 2020. Mm. I, was I asked about it? Mm -hmm. But I'm subscribing to it mm -hmm. because I'm being taught about it. So there's right. nothing wrong from bottom to down. The only issue when you do that is assuming that everyone, everyone accepts what you're saying. So you didn't need to go and say, hey, do you accept this? Okay. Perfect. Anthony, how do we deal with this issue of well, the claims of top, bottom, other than bottom, top? Does it even matter? It should be understood very clearly. Uh, what comes from the top is actually government policy, mm -hmm. the ministries, the policies. Mm -hmm. And it's the local government that have to interpret the policies into action, mm -hmm. uh, actions that will actually make impact. So uh, what they need to do is to engage the citizens, let them have uh, the, the, these activities known to them, let them participate, let, let them play a part. But top up, I mean top down is not a problem. What they say is the policy is there. Mm -hmm. So if you have known those things that can bring transformation or change, you bring them to the local government. It's a local government to interpret which activities are going to be uh, dealt with in right. their districts. And the citizens must be informed and must participate. They must participate. And in your entry this week that we're starting, of course, you've spoken passionately about this issue of citizen participation and, 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 and the issue of outreach by the local leaders. In your entry, what things are you planning to do to ensure that this happens from your mandate at, as, as Rwanda Governance Board? We have actually designed... Um, a program for some selected districts. We have been going all over the country, trying to engage the local leaders and the citizens. But this time, we want to focus on specific districts. Mm -hmm.
for a period of about two, three years, and then we shall see the change that, that will change, will become. Because uh, when you go over the whole country uh, and you discuss with the local leaders, sometimes some will act, others will not. Others. Mm -hmm. So the survey we do shows us that if we focused, you will on, pilot on, on yeah, several pilot of them for some districts and, and see what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because we have outreach programs, we have uh, uh, citizen engagement programs, right. uh, and we, we have to engage citizens as well as leaders. To, right. Even yes. us as the media, we will follow up with you on of that. Of course, you are the, the, the most <laughs> important people. Perfect. Uh, Colette, I mean, what do you want to see moving forward as we conclude? Yeah. Very uh, briefly. Whether it's from uh, top down or bottom up, the, 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 who is in the center of all this? It's the citizen. Mm. So feedback, ownership, that is the key in, for the implementation of Imihiku. Right. So citizens should be given the priority, especially in uh, interchange meetings. Right. They should be informed. Mm. Yeah. They must be informed. They must be informed so, so that they, get, they own all the process. Which, yeah, the process. Perfect. Yeah. Ivan, how do you ensure that this happens as we move on? Well, I, I, I totally agree with what you've said, but if you allow something that you know, I would want to conclude with is right. that for me, when we see this performance of Imihigo, and we see obviously several districts not having done well, mm. it, it's not just about the leadership of the district. It's for all of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, delay, uh, failure to achieve things means that s some things have not been done and it affects development. And so it should be a concern to all of us. It's not just for the district. For the district. It's, it's for it everyone. Affects the whole it affects country. the whole country. Right. And we should be able to support them, uh, come close to them, help them uh, see how things can be done better. And I think it will be for the benefit of everyone. Of all of us. Yeah. And also, it shouldn't be the responsibility of the district. Mm -hmm. It should be a shared responsibility. A shared responsibility. Yeah, for the, all the, the stakeholders. The all stakeholders. Yeah. Perfect. On a lighter note, uh, Ivan, Arsenal started off on a very bad note today. I mean, visit Rwanda. We've signed a very good deal with them. Uh, do they also have an Imihigo? If they fail, we, are we going to also evaluate them? Well, well, I think that that's uh, for RDB and others to respond. Uh, right, Eugene, I, I, I really would have been. Uh, you want right to put? You want to put? Don't want to put your foot on that. Yes. Perfect. Let's see what we have right here. We have uh, Vanessa Rukundo says exactly as Ivan says. This is a working progress. Round of applause. But on a serious note, I think the district leaders could use some help understanding how best they can plan and perform. Hands of applause uh, to you, Nelson. This is from Calixte, who says you are very brilliant and you are digging deeper and looking f uh, in many angles to reveal out the root cause of poor performance of districts in Mihigo. Thank you. Uh, we have another one here. The best way of planning should start. I think we read that. Uh, let's take a look at this one from Christian, who says, for, um, thank you, Nelson, for mentioning out active citizenship. But for other young people, how can we encourage them to be active and be engaged in contributing to their country's development? I think I have a straight answer to that. You need to own it yourself. Nobody will come and spoon feed you to actually take part in what affects you in one way or another. You need to actually demand for it. No one is going to give it to you on a silver platter. Of course, it's a conversation that was wide and we could not be able to exhaust everything in just an hour. But we start off the conversation here and we continue on our social media platforms. Keep tweeting, hashtag, in focus RW. As always, my name is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye for now. for its tremendous ability to fulfill your dreams invites you to connect more with your friends and family in Europe with three weekly flights to Brussels one of the most popular cities for the African diaspora take advantage of the exquisite service on board our punctual flights